Hello and welcome to the Connected Yoga Teacher Podcast. I'm your host, Shannon Crow. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm just feeling really grateful for this land where I'm recording from today, the land of the Anishinaabek, Odawa, and Mississauga people, which is three hours north of Toronto on what's often called the Bruce Peninsula up here in Ontario, Canada. If you are new here, you might not know that I'm also a mom of three, a yoga teacher, and the founder of Pelvic Health Professionals. And I have to say, as a mom of three this week, there's some big things happening here. If you've been listening, you now know that all of my quote-unquote kids are now adults. It feels like they're still my kids, and yet they have grown up into young adults. So time flies. If you're raising little kids, I know that sometimes the days are long. Let me tell you, as a mom who's been there, the years go quickly and they seem to be picking up speed. If you are a returning listener and you've been here before, you know how things go around here. This podcast was created for you, the yoga teacher, so that each and every week you can feel connected to information and inspiration that is going to support you as you grow and build your very own yoga business. This week, I'm checking in to see how you're doing as best I can as a podcaster. Believe me, if I could call you right now, I would. But we now have thousands of listeners, so thank you for being here, for sharing the podcast, telling other yoga teachers, leaving us a review. You've really made this possible that I can even be sitting here saying like six years of podcast episodes almost and thousands of listeners and I can't call you all to check in. So it's exciting, but I still wanted to do something today where it felt like I could check in with you. And if you've been listening to the podcast over the last few weeks, this mini series of solo episodes that I've put together for you is happening because I had this idea brewing in my brain for a while. And it was really inspired by many yoga teachers asking me like, what are the steps to starting and growing a small business? How do I make sure that I do all of the steps? And I sat with this question for a while knowing that The first step isn't about building an email list or knowing how to sequence a yoga class or taking a training so you feel more prepared. Those are important things for yoga teachers who are building a business, but they're not the first steps. The very first step is making sure that you have enough energy to do all of those things that are required because being an entrepreneur takes a lot of time and energy. And because I know I want to be, and I think we together as yoga teachers want to be people who show up and use the tools of yoga in our own lives. We walk the walk instead of just talking the talk. And I think that's one difference here with yoga teachers who are running a business as opposed to someone else running a business. So... If you are having a week right now where you feel like you have very low energy, I've got you covered. Go back and listen to episode 308. That is where I talk about how I have kept going when I feel like I'm running on an empty tank and I share everything that I possibly can think of to help you if it's a week like that. And then you might remember if you've been listening along in episode 309, I talked about the seasons of business and that got me really thinking about seeds. I shared a lot of gardening analogies in that episode for a reason and I'll link to that episode in our show notes in case you missed it and you want to go back and have a listen. It is not necessary for today at all. Many of you told me that you love the gardening references, and I think this is because I get really excited about talking about gardening and seasons and seeds and growth and all of the things that we see out in nature. I learn a lot from nature, and I try and bring that into uh, what I share here on the podcast and into my yoga classes and my own personal practice. Now, last week in episode 310, I talked about how to build a personal yoga practice. And today, I want to check in and see how you're doing with this. 
Maybe you are off to the races and fitting something in every single day for you so that you can keep giving to your business and the people around you and you've got this. But just in case you listened last week or you've been feeling at all like I cannot fit in any time for a personal practice, today's episode is just for you. It's an example of how to make this happen, and it is going to be very short for a reason. So if you are busy driving, or maybe you're cleaning, or you're walking the dog right now, come back to the homework part of today's episode. Come back to where we start the practice. You can have a listen to the whole thing and then come back. I just want you to know that this is going to be super short. I'll explain more in a moment about how this is going to work. First, though, I want to thank our sponsor, Offering Tree. They make sure that you get the podcast episodes like this one. They are an easy to use all in one online platform for yoga teachers, and they provide a personal website for you. They help you with booking, payments, blogging, and so many other great features that yoga teachers need. If you go over to OfferingTree.com slash Shannon, you'll get 50% off your first three months or 15% off any annual plan. So I love it that they also give our listeners a discount. That's over at OfferingTree.com slash Shannon. Today's episode is also brought to you by Pelvic Health Professionals, which is my online membership for anyone wanting to learn the most up-to-date information about pelvic health from amazing worldwide guest experts. One of our members, shout out to Jessica. Thank you so much, Jessica, for posting this comment and then giving me permission to share it here on the podcast. Jessica wrote, Hi, I just wanted to share that at the end of my prenatal yoga class last night, I had a couple clients ask me if I was a pelvic floor physio because of the information I shared during practice. One of them is even doing her APTA certification and said she had just learned a bunch of what I was sharing in her previous week's class. So thank you to Shannon Crow and everyone here for such wonderful education and tools. I'm so grateful to be part of this community. Thank you again for posting this, Jessica, and allowing me to share it here on the podcast. I think it's such a great example of how you are sharing this with your community. You're hearing all kinds of positive feedback from the people who are there, especially the professionals in your community who are training as pelvic health professionals. It's amazing when we can learn more about pelvic health so that individuals who are coming to our yoga classes can hear the most up-to-date information across many modalities. So it doesn't have to just be, you know, when we go see our pelvic floor physio, we learn about our pelvic floor. We can be learning that when we move and breathe in a yoga class as well. That makes me really excited. If you are thinking, okay, I want to check this out, head on over to pelvichealthprofessionals.com to sign up. I'll tell you about an upcoming speaker later on in today's podcast that is going to talk to us about birth positions. So if you are teaching prenatal or postnatal yoga, or if you want to know more about the pelvis and how that works, pelvic floor and birth, head on over to pelvichealthprofessionals.com. All right, let's get back to me checking in with you today, specifically with your personal practice. Is it happening? Are you doing something daily that feels helpful, and nurturing just for you. Your personal practice is here to sustain you. And if that is feeling impossible, I get it. And that is why I wanted to create today's podcast episode so that we can make it happen together and you can see how small and short this can be. So we are going to plant a tiny seed of self-care today. When I first learned the Sanskrit term bij, meaning seed, I just loved everything that came along with it. The imagery that I saw, maybe because I love gardening, as I said, but I remember learning in that yoga teacher training and really thinking about the seeds that I was planting that would take time to germinate and grow. 
So in our time together today, I'd like to just, let's work on planting this tiny, tiny seed. And we don't even have to know how it's going to grow and expand and do all of the things that it's going to do, but we're really going to talk about planting this tiny, tiny seed of self-care and personal practice. And we're not just going to talk about it, we're going to do this. So if you have space to right now, find a comfortable spot and then decide, do you want to lie down right now or do you want to be sitting or standing or moving in some way, walking or swaying? I'm going to read a short poem by Pat Bryson, who has given me permission to share this on the podcast by reading it on the podcast. And this is the part where if you're busy right now, you can replay this audio later when you have a few minutes. Then at the end of the poem, I'd like to share Pat's words about the poem that have given me a little bit more to even think about, that I I didn't realize some things about this poem. So... The only thing that you need to do right now, if you have the time for a short personal practice, is make yourself comfortable. So you might want to pause the podcast, grab a blanket, find floor space, and then check in and see, what do I need in this moment? Is it stillness or is it movement? Do I need to be inside or do I need to be outside walking or sitting in nature? Do I want to be standing? Do I want to be lying down? Do I want my eyes open or closed? This is really your personal practice. And your personal practice now will last the length of the poem, or you can pause after I'm done reading the poem and continue on with your practice. My goal here today is to make it as short and easy as possible for you. So let's dive in. The Cleverness of Seeds by Pat Bryson. They tried to bury us. They didn't know we were seeds. Mexican proverb. The way the maple seed twirls away from its tree and finds any available crack or crevice to slip itself into. And how the dandelion fluff is wished by children out along the wind to a new starting place, and how the burdock burr rides the fur or feather or pant leg of its unwitting assistant to get to where it wants to grow, and how cherry and apple and juniper allow themselves to be eaten alive and eventually dumped on new fertile ground, how some seeds, bold and defiant, pop off right into the face of anyone who tries to uproot their plant. And how some seeds float down rivers to oceans and are washed up on other shores. Or others are rounded up and kept in deep, dark holes and sometimes even forgotten there until one day they start to grow. Lying in wait for the rain leaning into sunshine or managing in shade, cultivated or wild, appreciated or despised, alone or in fields of their kind, they grow. If you need more time now to sit in meditation, with a journal, or if you want to roll around on the floor or find a nap, pause the podcast now and take all the time you need. Thank you so much to Pat Bryson, the author of this poem, for allowing me to share it here on the podcast and for her email. I want to share what she wrote because it really impacted me. Pat writes, Hi Shannon, thanks for your email and kind words about the cleverness of seeds. I'm very happy to have you read it on your podcast. Thanks for asking. I hope your listeners get the dichotomy of the seeds and the immigrants they're being compared to. I love the Mexican proverb in the epigraph. It was the inspiration for the poem. Stay well, stay strong, and take deep breaths. So I read this poem for the first time, Connected Yoga Teachers. 
thinking so much of the resilience of seeds and how it reminds me of the resilience needed to be human on this earth and how we all grow in different ways. And I didn't think at all about how this applies to immigrants. And I'm so grateful that Pat shared this with me and then shared it with all of us. So I'd love to hear from you. What were your thoughts when you first heard this poem? For those of you who like to share poems in yoga classes, I'm excited to hear if you decide to use this one and how you do. And for your own personal practice, did it feel helpful to have a poem read to you and have that time set aside? That's my practice. There's no right or wrong answer for this. You might prefer silence or music. I wanted to share this with you today because it gives an example of a very short personal practice. And if you don't have a daily practice at this point, see if this feels like a good fit. What would it feel like to play this poem or to you know, put a timer on for a very short amount of time? You do not need to roll out your yoga mat and light a special candle and journal and then move for an hour to have a personal practice. If you can, and if that feels good and it's working, amazing. But sometimes we're starting with something that's way too complicated when we're trying to add in a personal practice. So I hope this illustrates how short it can be, how simple it can be, and also that you take this and you build it out to whatever fits in your season of life right now. I'm also going to share some links in the show notes that will help you to build a personal practice, links that have helped me and also other teachers who I've collaborated with. I really want to say a special thanks to the guests from those episodes, Nina Andick, Pooja Madan, Matt Kowal, Diane Liska, James Clear, Barry Rissman, Judith Hansen Lassiter, Lizzie Lassiter, and Joe Bregnard. So like I said, this personal practice is here for you and you can repeat this daily, just the poem part of it and keep it short. Or maybe there's another poem that you want to read out loud and record it on your phone and just play it back. Use this and then move on to something else when it feels like that's a better fit. My goal in this entire episode is that you can feel, okay, this is short enough, I can do this. And this can really impact the rest of my day. And of course, I would love to hear from you if you have figured out a way to really build in a very small personal practice, or maybe you help your yoga students do this. Tell me, share it in the show notes. That's over at the connectedyogateacher.com slash 311, or tell us in the Facebook group or send me a voice message. You can do that from our website, theconnectedyogateacher.com. I also wanted to share a personal note here and a thank you to our sponsor, Offering Tree. I wanted to tell you that I'm actually using the Offering Tree software right now to book podcast guests in. So that's pretty new for me and I'm really happy with it because it makes everything so automatic. So I love that I can share one link with people who are booking in for a podcast interview And then that shows them my availability on my calendar and they can book right then. So there's no more back and forth emails. And from there, everything is automated. So text reminders go out, email reminders, the Zoom link. I don't have to think about anything beyond that booking link. And I wanted to tell you because you can use this to book people in for your one-on-one sessions, your classes, your workshops, your trainings, your retreats, and your other events. If you do online payments, if you do anything online like classes on Zoom, or if you want to build a professional and easy website, make sure to check out Offering Tree. Also, we have a discount code for you because you are here and listening to the podcast You can find that over at offeringtree.com slash Shannon. If you want to hang out in real time today, if you're listening on February the 13th of 2023, we have a live call at 1 p.m. Eastern. It's all about birth positions with Brittany Sharp McCollum. Now, if you're listening after this day, don't worry. 
We will record this for you. There will be a replay. You can access it at any time. And that's included in our Pelvic Health Professionals membership. So you can pop in there and try it out for a full month. See if you like it. If you don't like it, you can let us know and we'll send you a full refund to join this live call and access everything else in the library. We have a huge library of information in there. Then head on over to pelvichealthprofessionals.com. Thank you so much to our team over here who makes today's podcast possible, Suzanne Crunch and Sinead. Oh my gosh, I am grateful for you all each and every week when this podcast comes together. You're amazing humans. Thank you also to you, dear listener, for making this podcast possible. Like I said, we're coming up to six years of podcast episodes and it's thanks to you. It's thanks to your time here. It means a lot. If you would like to send an audio clip, I would love to hear from you and maybe share it on the podcast only with your permission. Head on over to the connectedyogateacher.com and right on our website, there's a button there for a voice message. I also love video messages, emails to get tagged in social media posts. I love to hear from you listeners. All right. Now I want to know, what will you be doing this week to stay connected to your personal practice so that you can share the yoga that lights you up? <laughs>